Imagine you're Jocelyn Bell, an astronomer graduate from Cambridge University in 1967, and one night, while you're running observations on the night sky, you detect a repeating signal. A radio beacon flickering every 1.3 seconds. Could this be the first signs of intelligent life outside our own planet? Nope, it turns out to be a spinning star. A really fast spinning star blasting out gamma rays. Hey, and welcome to Making Space. Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell, as she's now titled, was pretty skeptical about this pulsating emission being little green men, and proved it by working through past logs until she discovered another signal. In her own words, it's highly unlikely that there's two lots of little green men on opposite sides of the universe, both deciding to signal, at the same time, on a rather commonplace frequency. Still, the label LGM became the designated prefix for pulsars. Which is kind of cute, actually. I think the prefix PSR is now used, though. Bell's discovery is somewhat tarnished by her supervising advisor, Anthony Hewish, winning the Nobel Prize for the discovery in 1974, which is a tad controversial in academic circles. A pulsar is a highly magnetised rotating neutron star. The spin is incredibly regular because neutron stars and density and very complicated science and a pulsar's magnetic fields are not aligned with the axis of rotation. The fields focus all the escaping radiation into two beams at the star's magnetic poles. The result is a cosmic lighthouse blasting out a jet as it rotates in space. To fake all that, in After Effects is relatively simple, but not as easy as it should be. I'm going to show two methods. The first is my preferred option, which uses Boris FX stage light plugin. This was a registration gift when I first registered the included Mocha AE tracker. I've kept the plugin over a few releases now, and Boris support has even helped me when I lost the license code. But I've no idea if this is still available for free, and it looks like it usually costs $199. So I'll also show how to use C4D Lite to achieve pretty much the same look. I do find C4D a bit render heavy though. In theory, you could use the included beam effect, but I struggle to get a usable result. Helium X's Helium plugin can also do volumetric light, but I have stage light, which gave me the best result. Let's jump into After Effects. I've got an HD comp set up, and the first thing I'll do is go to Layer, New, Null Object. Make it 3D, and hit Enter, and rename this to Pulsar Null. We'll hang everything off this and it becomes easier for pointing cameras and so on. Next, let's create a light by going to Layer, New, Light. Make it a Spotlight. And set the intensity to 500%. We want this bright. And make the light a child of the null object. And zero out its position. Expand the light's properties on the timeline and set the cone angle to 35 degrees. And the feather to 100%. And now, select the pulsar null layer and tap R to expose the rotation controls. Hold Alt and click on the Y rotation stopwatch. And in the expressions area, type time times 200. Now to see the light, go to Layer, New, Solid. Make it a black comp size solid, and then rename this to Stage Light. And then go to Effect, BCC Lights, BCC Stage Light. Check the boxes for Use Comp Camera and Use Comp Light. Then expand Comp Light and expand Spotlight. Increase the master intensity to 200, and increase the target to 2000. This gives us a really powerful beam. But when I preview it, when the light is facing away, it's not really clear. So let's use an expression to exaggerate the effect. First, we need a camera. Go to Layer, New, Camera. And then we need another null object. Make it a child of the first null. This will serve as a target layer. When the target null is behind the pulsar null, we'll determine its 3D position and use that to reduce the light's cone angle. 
and set its position to be 500. To make this easier, I've already written the expression. It's in the description below. It's a text file. Copy it to your clipboard. Then holding Alt, click on the Lights Cone Angle Stopwatch and paste it in. Here it is on screen. In a nutshell, we convert the null to get its relative position in Z space. And I've also added in a check so that this expression only comes into play if the camera is on the same level as the pulsar. If it's looking from above, we want the beam on all the time. So what we have now is probably not scientifically accurate, kind of what you'd expect to see. Select the light and then go to Edit, Duplicate. Expand the transform properties on the timeline and set the Y rotation to be 180. So it's pointing in the opposite direction. Then expand the light's properties and edit the expression on the cone angle. On the linear function, swap the 0 and 70 so it reads 70, 0. And now we have two beams only shine when facing the camera. Unless we move the camera up. For the neutron star itself, create a new white solid. 100 pixels by 100. Rename it to star. Make it 3D and a child of pulsar null. Expand its material options on the timeline and turn off accept lights. Then go to layer, transform, auto orient and select orient towards camera. If the solid is not directly facing the camera, hit R to expose the rotation controls and make sure everything is zeroed out. Then switch the rectangle tool to ellipse and double click it to add a circular mask that fills up the solid. So this gives me a perfect sphere that I don't need to create in 3D. Go to effect, stylize, glow. Set the based on to alpha, the radius to 60, and the intensity to 2. And set the AB colors to some blues to give it a subtle tint. I went with 8AC FFF and 0096FF. Then double tap M to expose the mask properties, set the feather to 10 and the expansion to minus 10. And set the blending mode to add. And maybe scale down the start at 50%. For a finishing touch, Go to Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace. This adds a distortion to the star. Probably not scientific in any way, but sort of implies sheer gravitational forces, like something is warping light. But if we move the camera, the displacement center is off. So holding Alt, click on the offset stopwatch, and then use the expression pick whip to select Pulsar Null. Then, at the end of the expression, add dot to comp with a capital C, brackets, square brackets, 0, 0, 0, close squares, close brackets. This converts our null's 3D position into 2D coordinates. And that's it! If you can't get stage light from Boris FX, then while the circular solid is fine, we need to replace the volumetric lights. Create a new C4D file by going to File, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File. Name your file and save it and C4D will open. Eventually. Go to Edit, Project Settings, and set the project time and frames to match your After Effects comp duration. Easiest way to do that is to make sure the frame rate is matching, in my case 30 FPS. Then in the project time, type 30 times 60, or 60 seconds. Then go to Create, Light, Spotlight. In the Attributes panel, on the General tab, set the Visible Light to Volumetric. And if I go to Render, Render View, this is what we get. If you switch to the Details tab or the Visibility tab, you can see how to adjust the beam until it looks right to you. Then when you're happy, I mean, you're using C4D, how happy can you be? But when you are, switch to the Coordinates tab. On the first frame, 
set a keyframe on the RH property. Move the timeline forward and now type in 360 and set a new keyframe. Playing that back gives us the spin, but it's not perfect with it speeding up and slowing down. So go to Window, Timeline F Curve. And then in the new panel, go to Frame, Frame All. Right click on one of the keyframe points and choose Linear. Then drag a box to select both keyframes on the graph and go to Functions, Track After, Continue After. So C4D will continue the rotation forever. It's a bit slow, so deselect both keyframes and then click on the second one and drag it closer to the first. And there we go. Now in the object panel, duplicate the light by selecting it and going to edit, copy, and then edit, paste. Drag light.1 into light. This is C4D's version of parenting. Then in light.1's coordinates tab, right click on the rotation properties and choose animation, delete track. Then change the value in R.H to 180. Save your project and return to After Effects. Drag Pulsar.C4D into your comp and set the camera to centered comp camera. And change the renderer to current. And there you go. Two ways to make a cosmic lighthouse, which is also an album and separately an IPA. As always, the project is in the description below, right next to the like and subscribe buttons. Just saying. If you have any ideas for other space phenomena, please feel free to ask in the comments or maybe check out the Make in Space playlist to find out how to make black holes, comets, nebulas, and loads more.